Believe it or not, speed, distance and time helped make these stunts possible. Now I've come to this film set to meet stunt woman Elaine Ford, who's going to help me investigate why knowing about constant speed is so important when filming explosive action scenes. And I mean explosive. This is the getaway car that I'll be driving, and the shot opens with me screeching into view. I'm then going to drive up very fast behind this vehicle here with a camera on it, and then I'm going to pull alongside it so the camera can see into my car, right. and then I'm going to drive through that barricade over there where I'll screech to a halt and there'll be an explosion going off. Fine. <laughs> so, how important is speed and all that? It's really important for me. I'll tell you why, because first of all, I need to know how long the director wants me to take to catch up the camera car, OK? I then need to know how fast the camera car is going so that I can maintain a constant speed alongside it so the camera can actually see into my car. Then I need to know how long the director wants me to drive before I crash through the boxes. And really, because speed, time and distance are all linked, I've then got to work out how long the road needs to be so we can get everything done. Got a lot of working out to do. Have. <laughs> <laughs> I know that the camera vehicle here is going to be doing a constant speed of 50 kilometres an hour, OK? And that's 14 metres per second. Um, I will actually be going faster. I'll be, go I'll be doing 20 metres per second because the director wants me to catch up the vehicle and pull alongside it before going through the barricade. So we know the constant speeds of both vehicles, but how are we going to work out from that where the cars meet? I can actually work out how far the camera car has travelled by plotting it out on this graph, OK? So we know that the camera car is doing 14 metres per second. So if we say after one second it's done 14, after two, 28 metres, after three, 42, and so on, OK? And then if we look at this graph here, we can see that we've got a nice straight line. Now, because I'm going to be going a lot faster, I'll be doing 20 metres per second, OK? You can see here that my line is a lot steeper and, of course, the two lines don't cross. So, on a time-distance graph, something with a constant speed produces a straight line. And the higher the constant speed, the steeper the line is. Elaine and the director have worked out that she will catch up with the camera car after 10 seconds. The camera truck will be travelling at a constant speed of 14 metres per second. That's 14 metres every second. And if the camera car is travelling at a constant speed of 14 metres per second, then in 10 seconds it will have covered 140 metres. If we actually put a marker, for instance, 140 metres past the first cones and both cars reach it at the same time, we know we're doing OK. Right. Now, this is 114 metres, so this is where Elaine should catch up with the camera truck. But the director wants me to do another 10 seconds so he can get a side view of the car before it hits the barricade. So that means 10 times 14, that's another 140 metres. Time for a test run. Now she should catch up with the camera truck at the cones. Ah, now she's caught up, overtaken and um, just kept on going. But again, find out what's going on. Elaine, you came from behind the truck and then you overtook the truck and kept on going. Well, I didn't actually change my speed, so I was going faster than the camera truck, which is why I overtook them. You see, when you overtake somebody, you're not actually doing the same speed as them. So what I need to do is, once I'm alongside the camera truck, I need to then reduce my speed to the same speed as the camera truck to make it work. 